I've been around you long enough to know you, you're going to do what you're going to do. And I, I guess first question is goals and expectations. I mean, when you decide you're going to do this, I mean, what is the motivator? Uh, just to keep doing stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I read something the other day in some psychology book, or either that or I was in counseling with Dr. Phil probably, <laughs> and it said that if you're kind of creative, if, if you're not creating, you're usually self-destructing or, you know, making a mess, and you know me. And uh, uh, so I grabbed a bunch of cameras and took off and started playing with that, with photography and stuff like that, but when I'm between you know, trips and taking pictures and stuff. I need to do something. I bought an old bulldozer, you know, and ran out and ramped it up as fast as it would go, trying to get a tree out of the way, thinking I was being creative out <laughs> in my land. <laughs> How'd I that put, work out? Well, I ended up on the hood, burning my arm, hanging on to the, the, the exhaust pipe <laughs> because I hit the tree real hard and it threw me off the, the steering wheel or whatever it is. And it, uh, so that didn't work. <laughs> People have been killed on yeah. bulldozers. Oh, right here. Yeah. Right here. And, and it looked like it was a loose yeah. tree when I hit it, but it wasn't. It didn't move. <laughs> hit it hard. Yeah. So yeah. to answer your question, uh, it, it's just music something that we gravitated to, and this, this, this deal came up with a big machine and, and uh, Nash Icon, and I caught wind of that. Talked to uh, Jim Weatherson, and he said, hey, we'd love to have you over here to make a record. It's like, and, you know, Allison Jones with the A&R department, just started just dumping good songs on me. You know, of course, I'm too lazy to go write anymore. You know, I, I think I wrote a couple maybe. But uh, uh, I mean, then we, we brought uh, Jay in, and uh, that was a new new concept. You know, Jay's, I mean, he's kind of, he's been around, uh, but, uh, you know, as a producer, done you know, a few projects, but... I think here in Nashville, it's not quite like one of the mainstream guys right now. He's a new up and comer, and I thought, well, I'm not so. I don't. I don't know. We'll have to try it. Mm -hmm. So, and, and and I think Jay probably thought the same thing about me. So we went in, grabbed two or three songs, and and did it. And you know what a control freak I am. It, to a point to where it's it's, it's pestering people. Uh, <laughs> Can I get another cup of coffee? <laughs> 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 is we ever going to answer this question? <laughs> this is just question one. <laughs> but uh, I, I have never stayed out of the way any more than I did with Jay. I mean, things would come back, and, and I go, holy cow. Parts would come back. Bass, bass, bass lines would come back. And vocals. I, I just, man, knocked out by it. So, luckily, he's not here, so we can say good things about him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you did. You did. You did a killer job. I appreciate that so much. Yeah, and the sonics, I mean, the way the record sounded. You mm -hmm. know, it's always, you're always chasing that when you're a recording mm -hmm. artist, whether you're George Strait or Willie Nelson. You're after that, you know, uh, a sound that, and it does progress on the on the technical end uh, over time and stuff. And it's just it's interesting. So, backing up to the question, <laughs> <coughs> um, you're. You know your your goals and expectations here. No, no, no real, no real grandiose goals. You know, you and I are out playing Caesars. Yeah. I mean, what, what else? You can't get any better than that. Yeah. There's there's not a gig out there that's any better than that. Absolutely. And we're locked in for you know next few years. It's you know, I just need something to do between my you know I'm in, in my downtime. Yeah. So and and it doesn't have to be grandiose. You know, no, I mean, I think they're... about even the artists that that we're trading off with in, in Vegas are great examples. Rod mm -hmm. Stewart and Elton John, extremely talented, yeah. just like you, great singers, um, probably, you know, making as good a music, arguably, you know, I'm sure in their minds. Yeah. You know, I've heard heard your record. You're singing as good as you ever sang. So I guess, you know, that just from a, just from a curiosity standpoint, you know, when you get to that point in your career, when you've had the kind of ride that me and you had, yeah. you know, you, we've, we, we climbed Mount Everest and we looked out there and we saw the world and man, that was cool. You know, how do so, we get out? Yeah, how do we get, <laughs> how do we get off here? <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is a great statement in itself. No Jane, get me off this crazy thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's just it's in your, you know, you know, you know it. You show up with it in your blood. 
and uh, it, it, we'll go out with it in our blood. Yeah. It's just, it's kind of that simple. It is. And even, but, but again, back to the real question, to the heart of the question is, so your expectations are, I mean, are you, you know, what, what are they really? I mean, what, this is what uh, uh, John Bon Jovi we were in New York doing something a few years ago, a couple years ago, right after we stopped, and I was still messing around with this stuff. And he, uh, he said, so, so what are you going to do? He says, you going to, you going to get a hit record or something somewhere and <laughs> get back on a bus and go back on tour? You know, and I'm thinking, he's sitting there shaking his head going, N -n 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 no, you're not. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but, you know, we, as, as artists or whatever, or yeah. creative types and just fly, we, we have that tendency to, you know, hey, here's what I have learned. Nothing, never commit to an absolute or, or spit that out. You know, yeah. like, we'll never do that. I'll never, I'll always do this. It's like, no, nah, it's just something to do. Well, I get back on the bus and go on tour. If something were to happen or whatever that is, mm, bleh, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. I think it's funny because it's... It, not, not like we used to run. Not that hard. Not that hard because you reach a certain place in your career where it comes full circle and you stop feeling like you have something to prove, and you do it for the love of it again. Mm -hmm. The reason that you first started that's out doing it in the first place. Yeah, you come at it from a different place. Yeah, and so that's that's what this feels like. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think's most gratifying? I guess about the work that you do now, other than other than selfish gratification. As far as what 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 to you now is kind of the ultimate compliment. It, 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 the ultimate compliment would be for my wife to stop calling me a narcissist six times a day, <laughs> uh, which hasn't <laughs> happened. Uh, How do you think your work would achieve that? <laughs> <laughs> it would be a costly divorce. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> about, about six months after wh whoever else comes along would be calling me a narcissist too, so we just, we'll, we'll fight it out. I'll get through it. I don't know. Probably like all of us, I bet if we really got real with ourselves, we're 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 selfish about what we get out of this business and are doing what we do. You know, it's just there's a personal payoff to, to us. You know, I like sometimes I like to listen to a song and go, "Dang, I I I, I think I nailed that vocal." Yeah. You know, it's a challenge. It's like getting but out after there on you the listen to it a hundred times, <laughs> and you're totally absorbed in it, and you're totally proud That's what of narcissists your, do. You're proud of yourself for the work you did. Then, when when you send it out there like you are now, yeah. what what's the ultimate compliment coming back? Well, uh, in this specific situation, it would be it, it would be for it to have success uh, on the radio, probably chart success. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, that's it. I mean, I, I don't, I don't live by that, and haven't lived by it for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, because I, I do think that's probably for artists like you that still have the same talent you've always had. Yeah. But once you've had that career, and so many millions of fans have Brooks and Dunn or Ronnie Dunn records at this point, there, it's just like James Taylor, you know. He still, he, I still admire him the same way I did the first time I heard "Sweet Baby James." Yeah. But it doesn't mean I, I'm, I'm waiting with bated breath to see when his next CD's coming out because I got a stack of them and I've worn them yeah. out. And you know, I think as as artists, there's down inside you have to be some sort of realist to keep from being frustrated because yeah. you're you're making great music. Yeah. And I and I hope to uh, I hope to hell this thing uh, has has great success because I'm on it. <laughs> See? It's always back to us. Yeah. Uh, so, me, me, me. So what are you uh, thinking? I mean, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Of all the great people that you could have doing duets and whatever on this record, you know, wow, would you call me to sing on this thing? I mean, you had such a good shot at it, at having success and... Here's a chance to start anew and do something fresh and exciting. Wow, what is wrong with you that you I would call to talk me? I out of it for the record. What right? are you doing? Uh, what, why didn't you call Jay, me first Jay before tried, you called me? sharp. LaVox tried it, and he's put too many licks in it. And, and he's just, you know, he thought, well, maybe kicks is around. So. Uh. <laughs>
away we went. No, yeah. it's just, it's, you and I are out doing what we want to do now. We work for years to, to have fun, and why not, you, why not make it fun, bring in people that, yeah. that you, have, you enjoy being around, you're comfortable being around. Now, now that we're yeah. not a duo, let's sing together. <laughs> you know what I'll say? <laughs> well, you know, it snuck up on us the first time. This time we did, yeah, we didn't. Right, did it on purpose, and yeah. it's it's a cool sounding record. Yeah. So, again, here you're at this point where you can do anything you want to do, yeah. and and we've known Jay a long time, and he's done some cool records. Chicago, it's not like you know you don't have cred, but you know, to, a chance to work with someone you've you don't know or you've never worked with or Don Waz or, you know, what mm -hmm. people would think, oh, that's maybe what he'd turn to. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's I think it's just interesting that, that you guys would hook up and that process um, when you started recording. I mean, I've obviously been in the studio with you a lot. Yeah. Um, you guys obviously just... Did you? How many songs did you cut, or how did you approach it? Did you say let's do two songs, and or what? We did it first. We went in and cut, I think, three songs mm -hmm. to see how the process would go, and then we ended up cutting about eleven songs together when it was all said and done. And I think for me, it was uh, I was so excited to get a chance to work with one of my favorite singers in country music. I mean, there's no doubt about it. So I was like a kid in a candy store, you know. I'd I'd been thinking for many, many years about what I would do if I ever had the chance to do a Brooks and Dunn record. You know, years ago before Clarence even managed us, I said if there's ever a shot to do a couple of sides on these guys, I would love to work with Ronnie. I mean, I just think he's one of the most amazing singers we have in our genre, any genre really. And so I think for me it was a, a chance to jump in and really uh, have something to prove with somebody that was a hero of mine, you know, and, and, and a really good friend too. So there was no ice-breaking period. There probably was creatively, but we were already friends, so it, there was already a level, a certain level of comfortability there uh, to begin with. And the more we started to dig in and make the music, uh, we didn't have to really work hard at it. The tunes were so good, they uh, they sort of produced themselves. You mm -hmm. know, you, you you chip away at it a little bit, but when you have a really good song that can stand on its own with an acoustic and a vocal, that's really all you need. And, and I, I, for me, it was just a joy. Like, like he's saying, you know, idle time doesn't serve me well either. And to be able to make music for the love of making music with somebody that I love and somebody that I admire... As an artist, uh, it was just, it was a dream come true for me. Well, you have a good demeanor in the studio. We did a, a Christmas soundtrack together. So, you know, obviously you're a great musician and, and uh, understand Thank what's you. going on. And I think you, you have a good sense of when to lay out as a producer and when to let people do their thing. And I think Ronnie likes that too. So I can, I can see you guys going together. Did you have a, did you have a vibe in mind just knowing how Ronnie sings and knowing the history of even the music we made of what direction you wanted to go, or did you let Ronnie pick the songs? And as a producer, how, how involved or how, how did you feel you should approach that? He, uh, he sent me a bunch of links to the songs that Allison had been sending him, and I would give him my opinions. And what, what ended up really happening was we had the same opinions about about the songs in the there end. Was no, there was no like, <clears throat> like push and pull mm -hmm. on it. There really wasn't. Um, That's I don't cool. remember any particular song that, that we went, no, no, no. I mean, there was the A and R process was so so good. Yeah, and, and well executed. That, I wanted to stay true to who Ronnie was as an artist. I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. I think if you go screwing up the foundation of what you've got too much. Uh, you're you're not gonna come out with anything good. I wanted to stay true to who he was, let his vocal shine, and maybe just make it a tad more modern on the production into things, but still have a great balance between classic country mm -hmm. and a little of the modern. And the songs are a little more modern too. Some of them are. There's a song called Young Buck that comes to mind immediately. That is one of those. It's a classic Ronnie Dunn vocal, but it's mo it's a modern. <laughs> produced track and it's uh it's a perfect marriage and I, I, I it's one of my favorite projects i've ever worked on musically as mm -hmm. far as musically goes he's, he's sure. really gifted at at adding you know contemporary you know in and in, in especially in, in this business you got to be careful mm -hmm. uh, if, to to walk that line and he really did a, a an ingenious job at 
Uh, yeah, that. I don't think he's going to get in trouble there when I see as blurred as that line is right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the records that I'm getting in here what, every what week. Line? Yeah, there, I think Whoa. the line is pretty much gone. You know, so. <laughs> but it's great. These yeah, days that's fun to, to, to be able to do, do that. Sure. You, you know, you know, you know. Yeah. Yes. Every, every, and I've got my little comfort nest in the barn where my, you know, my microphone. Yeah, you got it working. It's all there. And the magic barn. My yeah. buffalo skin with all the, every time I pat my foot, dust kicks up. <laughs> People run. That's, and we that's where that, that's where that magic nas nasal sound show, comes yeah. from. It's the dust mites. <laughs> the dust <laughs> mites. <laughs> First time, yeah, What's the secret to your sound, the yeah. dust mites? We were over there doing some stuff with Ruby the other day. You know, she, she walks in there and goes, she grabs her Kleenex and starts kind of like acting like she's going to sneeze. Of course, she doesn't sneeze. <laughs> and she goes, it's this buffalo skin. I'm standing on, under the mic. <laughs> so I had to put it down, you, you know, to, so that when you're, you're singing and tapping your foot, you don't hear it through the microphone. <laughs> of course, it's she's allergic to it. So. Uh, well, good luck. You know, I mean, well, thank I, you. I wouldn't be as sincere sounding as that if I wasn't on this record, but... I'm really, I'm really pulling for, I'm really pulling for this one. It's my yeah. favorite cut. It's, it really is, and I haven't even heard it all, but I know it's going to be my favorite cut. Yeah, no, I can't wait to hear the whole thing. And I, the cuts that I've heard sound great, and I, I do mean that in all sincerity. Thanks. It's going to be fun to get it out there, man. You got a lot of fans who are looking forward to it. I know. Thanks, KB. All right, cool. Working together a long Thank time. Thank you, buddy. All right, see you guys. Uh, Try not to screw this up. <laughs>